I want to tell you all a story. Uh, I was working on this chapter, The Go Alone Culture, and I was talking with Sally, and I said, Sally, I am such a loner. I think I just, I like to be alone. I kind of like to do my own thing, and I think I'm just a loner. And she called me out completely, and she said, no, you are not a loner. God made people for relationships. We, we have to have community. And the problem is so many people think, you know, believe this sort of lie that I'm just a loner, and this has nothing to do with introvert, extrovert. Um, God made people for relationships and we need each other. So Sally, tell them sort of what you shared with me. Well, I really think that a woman alone in her home with sinful children, a messy house, and she's sinful and selfish and mundane tasks every day becomes a target for Satan because we become insecure, we feel like a failure, we listen to voices. And there's so many reasons in scripture why it says things like two are better than one. Woe to the one who has no one to, to hold him up. And I know that Sarah May's life lent her to being very much a loner. She might be independent, but all of us need women to come along beside us to be friends. To, we need women to make us feel like we're okay. And uh, we even have started small groups all over the world because we think that what we have to do in this isolationist culture, where you don't know your neighbors and you're going to a mega church, you don't know anybody sitting next to you, you need a friend. Yeah. What we've learned over the years, because we've moved 17 times, six times internationally, is that I need to be the one who's very intentional about making a friend. I invited a, a, some women that kind of came to my, some of my Bible studies, and I would see places. I, I picked nine women, and I invited them over to my house for a year for dinner. At the end of that time, we became good friends. We've done ministry together. We travel together because I needed to make my own accountability group. And I really want to encourage you. I told Sarah May, I said, Sarah May, are there three women who are older than you in your life? Take them out to coffee and see if one of them will start meeting with you. Because once she started having somebody who helped her with her kids, she helped her with her housework, she loved her, she just took her out for a cup of coffee and listened to her. Didn't you think you felt so much better oh about goodness. your life? Absolutely, yes, definitely. But I think and we're friends. so, yeah, we're so used to not having friends that we just get used to living that way. But when you start having a friend or a community, you begin realizing how much you've done without. So don't go it alone. Do whatever you can to find a friend and to read a book together that builds you with similar souls. Uh, ask someone over to your house. One of my friends in Austria had a thousand children. And <laughs> when we would come into her house, she would go like this. She'd just move all the junk off the table and she'd say, I'm so glad you're here, Sally. Let's be friends. I was so impressed that she valued friendship more than worrying about what her house was like. And she taught me a, a good lesson like that we that. need friends. We love each other right where we are. And we do better. Two are better than one. Don't go it alone. <laughs>